A Hitchhiker Guide to Manta Rays, Patterns of Association Between Mobula Alfredi, M. Byrostris, Their Symboyance and Other Fishes in the Maldives, presented by Amy Nicholson-Jack. This study was completed as a master's research project at the University of Bristol in collaboration with the Manta Trust. I'm going to start by providing some background to the research topic which focuses on associations within marine communities. So the term symbiosis, when considered biologically, describes a physically close and long-term association between two different species. Symbiotic interactions are common in marine ecosystems and are fundamental in regulating the distribution, abundance and diversity of many taxa. While some interactions have resulted in significant behavioural adaptations and co-evolutions, such as the mutualistic interactions shown in the images on the right, the competitive life of a marine species can also encourage short-term and opportunistic associations in order to gain food or protection. For example, pilot fish are known to commonly associate with large body vertebrates such as sharks and rays, presumably for protection from predation. So species engage in associations that vary in all degrees of intimacy, ranging from obligate to facultative, mutualistic to parasitic, and long-lived to ephemeral. These interactions, rather than the species at the individual level, determine the ecological processes that drive community dynamics, support biodiversity and ecosystem health. Therefore, species should not be considered in isolation and understanding the associations within marine communities is critical to implementing effective conservation and management. However, despite biological associations often being one of the first components of biodiversity to be altered by abiotic change, the associations between interacting species are often overlooked in regard to our changing world. Manta rays are often observed in association with hitchhiker fish species such as the Golden Trevally and members of the Remora family that closely follow or attach themselves to their manta ray host. It has been suggested that hitchhiking behaviour evolved to gain protection from predation, enhance foraging opportunities, increase locomotor efficiency and increase encounters with conspecifics. We explored the spatial and temporal variation in the presence of hitchhikers with reef and oceanic manta rays throughout the Maldives and investigated the factors which may influence association. The study aimed to improve our ecological understanding of interactions between manta rays and their hitchhikers by highlighting how these associations are structured and what the drivers of the associations might be. To achieve this, associated hitchhikers were analysed from over 120,000 manta ray photo ID images between 1987 and 2019. This totaled 72,912 sightings of 4,901 reef manta rays and 726 sightings of 663 oceanic manta rays. Logistic generalised linear mix models were used to investigate relationships between the presence of the most frequently observed hitchhiker species with each manta ray species and four explanatory variables, sex of pregnancy status, maturity status, site function and seasonality. So the results identified 12 different species of hitchhiker with reef manta rays. However, due to the low number of recorded associations with most of the hitchhiker species, only the adult and juvenile Shartsucker remora, as well as the Golden Trevally and Red Snapper was investigated further. The most frequently observed hitchhiker species was the adult Shartsucker remora, which was observed with reef mantas during 10% of the total sightings. When present, the number of adult Shartsuckers associated with reef mantas ranged between one and 24 individuals. The highest mean number of shark suckers occur with female mantas in their fourth trimester of pregnancy, which was significantly higher than with males, non-pregnant females, and second trimester pregnant females. There was also a significant difference between maturity status categories, where the highest mean number of shark suckers were observed with adults, which was significantly higher than with subadults and juveniles. Adult remoras were 49% more likely to be present with mantas at cleaning stations than at feeding areas and the number of adult shark suckers associated with reef manta rays was also significantly different during each season, with shark sucker associations, associations being 25% higher during the northeast monsoon than the southwest monsoon. In contrast, male manta rays were 59% more likely than females to have juvenile shark sucker and more as present. Juvenile shark suckers were 137% more likely to be present on juvenile manta rays than adults, and juvenile remoras were 108% more likely to be at feeding areas than at cleaning stations. 
whereas the red snapper and golden trevally were more likely to be present at cleaning stations than at feeding areas. For the oceanic manta ray, we identified five different hitchhiker species. However, again, due to the low number of recorded associations with some of these hitchhiker species, only the most frequently observed hitchhiker, the giant remora, was investigated further, which was observed during 55% of oceanic manta ray sightings. When present, the number of giant remora associated with oceanic manta rays ranged between one and three individuals per sighting. Giant remora were 41% more likely to be present with female oceanics than with males, and they were more likely to be present during the southwest monsoon than during the northeast monsoon. The model also suggested that giant remoras were most likely to be present with adult oceanic manta rays rather than juveniles. The remora family are well known for their hitchhiking behaviour on large body vertebrates. The relationship with their host is generally considered mutualistically symbiotic, as most remora species spend all their post-larval life in close association with their hosts, eating their ectoparasites in return for a range of benefits such as foraging on host ectoparasites or increased locomotor efficiency. However, the degree of host specificity and the nature of the association has been shown to vary along the symbiotic continuum ranging from mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. And the importance of this host food source varies between remora species and at different life stages. The sharpsucker remora is a neuritic species that is presumed to be physiologically unable to remain attached to their host when they dive at depth. Reef manta rays are known to undertake regular dives below 200 metres. Consequently, we suggested that sharpsucker associations are often ephemeral, with adults spending significant periods of time free swimming reassociating with their host upon their return to the remora's habitat. Shartsucker associations with manta rays varied significantly depending on host sex, pregnancy state and maturity status. Previous studies have demonstrated that female manta rays are significantly more likely to be sighted at cleaning stations than males. Cleaning stations are predominantly located on shallow reefs or in lagoons, which is suitable habitat for the neuritic sharksucker. Therefore, more frequent utilisation of cleaning stations by female manta rays provides greater opportunity for an association to occur. And the more time spent at these sites, the greater opportunity for a higher total number of associations to occur. Near-term pregnant female reef manta rays had the highest likelihood of an association with shark suckers. This is consistent with a previous study in the region which suggested that these increased associations were a result of thermoregulatory advantages gained by pregnant reef mantas occupying warm water habitat for longer periods during late term gestation to reduce gestation times. Associations between shark suckers and reef manta rays were also significantly higher during the northeast monsoon, which may be associated with the suppression of primary productivity which peaks during the Maldives southwest monsoon. As proposed sites of behavioural thermoregulation and predator avoidance, Cleaning stations may be utilised more during periods of lower primary productivity to conserve energy and reduce risk of predation. Thus, the greater period of time a manta ray spends within such habitat, the greater chance of an association occurring with a shark sucker remora. The result that juvenile shark suckers were more likely to be associated with juvenile mantas is most likely because juvenile manta rays spend most of their time in protected lagoons and other shallow water nursery habitats, increasing the chance of long-term associations between the two species. For juvenile shark suckers, the relationship with their host is more obligate than when they are adults, as parasitic copepods comprise a more integral part of their diet. Therefore, juvenile remoras that are not attached to a host may be exposed to unsuitable environments and increased predation risk. Most of the non-remora hitchhiker species identified in the study were neuritic, also reef dwellers. Considering the carnivorous feeding ecology of many of the non-remora hitchhikers identified, such as the red snapper, we suggested that these associates opportunistically utilise the body of the manta ray to get near their prey. Whereas the golden trevally associations are more likely to be driven primarily by the advantage of the shelter provided by the host, as these associations only last until the juvenile trevallies are large enough to survive by themselves. So overall, considering the ecology of both the host and the symbiont, the results of this study suggest that the patterns of association between reef manta rays and their hitchhikers is most likely driven by the spatiotemporal variation in the presence of manta rays in the hitchhiker's habitat. 
Unlike the reef manta ray and adult shark sucker association, the symbiosis between oceanic manta rays and the giant remora appears long term, with the remora rarely, if at all, leaving the protection of its host. Previous examination of the diet data revealed that parasitic copepods comprise a com crucial part of the giant remora diet. This obligate nature of the giant remora, like that of juvenile shark suckers, suggests that remora population dynamics are influenced by the distribution patterns of its host. A previous study found no association between the total number of giant remora with oceanic manta ray sex, morphotype and month of the year. As a result, it was suggested that the presence of remoras could be influenced by the level of host ectoparasites, population size, diving behaviour and surrounding environmental conditions. The significant differences we found in giant remora association rates recorded between male and female oceanics may also be linked to either foraging or reproductive strategies. However, much more knowledge of oceanic habitat use and behavioural ecology is required to address this hypothesis. Therefore, research into the ecological variations within and between oceanic populations is a topic worthy of future research and could reveal valuable insight into the ecology of both the host and the symbiont. So to conclude, the study identified a variation in the species of hitchhiker associated with reef and oceanic manta rays and it is clear that they provide a mid-water habitat for a broad range of species that require the protection and sustenance these hosts afford. Patterns of association in the presence of a range of hitchhiker species were identified, with spatiotemporal variation in the presence of manta rays acting as a driver for the occurrence of ephemeral hitchhiker associations. Until now, these interactions have remained undocumented or briefly addressed in the literature. As previously mentioned, biological associations are often one of the first components of biodiversity to be altered by abiotic change. Unfortunately, the climate crisis and other anthropogenic threats are becoming increasingly apparent worldwide, all affecting the resilience of ecosystems and the life they support. The study identified that changes in the environment determines the spatial and temporal variation in the presence and behaviour of manta rays, which in turn drives ephemeral hitchhiker associations. This is an important consideration because the fitness benefits and the degree of dependency between hitchhikers and manta rays remain unknown. It begs the question of how stable associations will be under increasingly unstable environmental conditions. Therefore, an enhanced effort to document and understand these symbiotic interactions is critical. Further research of hitchhikers in different manta ray populations is warranted to evaluate whether the associations and the structures found within the Maldives apply to other geographic locations as well as understanding the drivers of the association more holistically. While it could be said that these hitchhikers are just along for the ride, they could also play a valuable role in the ecological understanding and conservation of such economically valuable and vulnerable species.